Hi, everybody. Hi. Oh, that was such a nice warm welcome. Thank you. I was afraid I'd have to talk you through that the high there. All right, my uh, sermon is entitled Grumpy Meditator. I have two microphones here. Is that a problem? No. Great. I'll tell you why I've called it that a little bit later on. But right now, would you just indulge me in a short meditation? Yes. I'm looking for head nods. Yes. The people in the back, I'm looking for head nods. OK, oh, good. <laughs> and I got waves. Thank you very much. OK, to begin with, let's get. <laughs> Second floor underwear. <laughs> Am I too close to that? <laughs> okay. Well, we'll just meditate while Don figures that out. So the first thing we do, we we got to get to a good posture. <laughs> I'm kidding. You don't have to do that. <laughs> oh, Cameron will have to do that. All right. So to meditate, the only rule about posture is a straight straight back and that's for airflow so just you know get real comfortable you kind of and you're kind of dignified with your shoulders there just looking all that the rest of your body is totally relaxed not supposed to be pain in meditation you're supposed to the uh, the shoulder position keeps you alert now what to do with your hands <sighs> some people believe the right hand of compassion rests in the left hand of wisdom and you touch your thumbs and and do that uh, my middle school students like this position. They, they touch their thumb to their ring finger, and this is like a flower. I prefer just to open hands on my thighs, and it just also helps support my shoulders. Okay? Okay, we're going to do a little bit of, before we close our eyes, we'll do a little bit of a, a breath thing. We're going to breathe in for four, hold it for four, and then breathe out for eight. Now, eight's kind of hard because, but the out breath slows the heart, so we like that. Let's, let's practice that together. Breathe in, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. And out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that hard? OK, good. All right. Uh, so with our shoulders in a good position and relax the body, if, you, um, if it makes you uncomfortable, you don't have to close your eyes. Okay. Another little position advice is um, that, that resting grumpy face, mm. just a little half smile. Ah, do you see how your face relaxes? Yeah, that's nice. All right. Now I will invite you to join us for a relaxation moment. But just four minutes, we can handle that, right? Okay. As you breathe in to the count of four and hold Breathe out to eight. Find that comfortable position. Let the rest of your body relax. Give your body a quick scan. If there's any tightness, take a moment to relax that area. Now bring your attention to your breath. And with each exhale, let go. Relax your shoulders, your hands, your stomach. Feel yourself relax into this moment. Now allow your breath to soften and just take your natural breaths now. No need to count. Now collect your attention and see how each breath is alive. If you notice that you are caught up in daydreams of the past or plans of the future, just bring yourself back to your breath and stay in this moment. Now, relax your attention. Notice how you feel. Come back to this room. Wiggle your fingers and toes. 
when you're ready, open your eyes. Thanks for meditating with me. All right, our next screen is on uh, the benefits of meditation. A consistent practice of meditation will... I'll read it until they get it up. It lowers stress, reduces pain, increases brain matter, improves happiness, improves body awareness, it enhances focus and attention, and it improves the handling of difficult emotions. To put it simply, neuroscientists have found that consistent meditation has a profound impact on certain portions of the brain, along with the way different parts of the brain communicate with each other. The brain portions that regulate emotions, sense of self, perspective, learning, and memory were all enhanced according to many, many studies. Okay, uh, the next section is, uh, here are some people who accredit their, their success to meditation. Ray Dalio is the um, billionaire, fund, billionaire founder of the world's largest hedge fund. He says, meditation more than anything else in my life was the biggest ingredient of whatever success I've had. He's in good company. More and more world leaders have been taking note of meditation's benefits. Many Fortune 500 companies, including Google, AOL, Apple, and Aetna, offer meditation and mindfulness classes to their employees. And the top executives of many corporations say that meditation has made them better leaders. Many of them say meditation has given them centeredness, creativity, peace, and health. Okay, next we had Ariana Huffington. She's the uh, president, editor-in-chief of the Huffington Post Media Group. She says, Stress reduction and mindfulness don't just make us happier and healthier. They're a proven competitive advantage to any business. And we have Tony Schwartz. He's the founder and CEO of the Energy Project. He says that meditating has freed him from migraines and helped him develop patience. He also advocates mindfulness as a way to improve work performance. He says, maintaining a steady reservoir of energy physically mentally, emotionally, and yes, even spiritually, requires refueling it intermittently. And last we have Oprah. Okay. Oh, they're working on it. You'll see the pictures. It'll be great. I got a lot of pictures. He says, I walk away feeling fuller than when I came in, full of hope, a sense of contentment and deep joy, knowing for sure that even in the daily craziness that bombards us from every direction, there is still the constancy of stillness. Only from that space can you create your best work and your best life. And last but not least, Gandhi. We're doing a book study on him soon. Small, shy, a poor student, ignored because of the color of his skin, he took on the largest empire in the world and won without the use of a weapon. Do you know we also have Fort Worth celebrities who meditate? Feel nothing? Okay. The Fort Worth celebrities we have that meditate, we have Jane Hardwick. Jane says, I meditate because I feel better afterward. We also have Daryl Sellers. He says, <laughs> he says, I meditate because it helps me be a more peaceful person. And how do I create peace in this world? It starts when I sit down, shut up, and pay attention. Go Daryl. Also, we have Diane Austin. <laughs> Diane says, I meditate because it helps my mental health and physical well-being. I think that mindfulness helps me be a kinder person. Now for me, I attended a class at a meditation center in Austin, but like many self-improvement attempts, I didn't keep it up. But a couple of years later, I was in a tough job situation and I was stressed. I had a principal that found out I was gay and asked for my resignation. 
uh, I just decided, I hoped that at that time, that meditation would help me with my depression and my swirling angry thoughts. So I followed the instructions, got a cushion, got a quiet place, and I sat down and tried to calm down my brain. I took long, deep breaths, and I sat for a long, long time. When I'd achieved some calmness, I opened my eyes. I checked the clock. It had been two minutes. <laughs> we got it now? Can we show our Fort Worth celebrity meditators? He's, hey, Diane! <laughs> okay. Well, good, good. There's Daryl. Hi, Jane. The great meditators. Oh, great. <laughs> I told you I had pictures. Okay. But I kept going. I think the difficulty for me with um, meditation along with my severe ADD was that I intellectually knew I should do it. And I wasn't getting the experience that I wanted when I meditated. But I started to see the benefits, like from that list. Um, I made my early morning hours my time to practice. When I took time to meditate and unplug, it was like a reboot for my brain. It made me calmer. Seeing the advantages of having that regular meditation time, I sought out group practice that met once a week. Those guys would meditate for 45 minutes? <sighs> I struggled. I was a grumpy meditator. It seemed so easy for everyone in the group and I didn't understand why they meditated so well while I had a hard time. Nevertheless, I persisted. <laughs> oh, thank you for laughing at the right times. Okay, the leader said, I was always very surprised to see you come back every week because you wiggle so much. <sighs> Over the years, meditation has become easier. It is a mind training and I've been able to sit with concentration for longer periods, but I don't love it. I don't wake up thinking, oh yay, it's a time to meditate. Sometimes my commitment to meditation is the same commitment I have to brushing my teeth. It's a habit and I should do it. I know it doesn't work to wait until I have a great attitude about it. If we insisted on the right mindset and that we do everything with pure love, would any diaper in this world ever get changed? <laughs> the, the body gets to rest eight hours a night, but the brain never met rests unless there's meditation. It's a practice that's not supported in our culture. Our culture tells us to hurry up, do more, rush, cram the fire hose of the entire internet into your brain. So I don't feel a lot of support from the world and doing a calming practice every morning. So the difficulty of meditation, it's hard. Oh, this is my one little video clip. I hope you like it. It's Parks and Rec. You don't like Parks and Rec? Okay. As long as I'm here, can I ask you a question? Did you ever participate in meditation with Chris? Oh, yeah. When we dated, he made me do it every week. What am I in for here? Okay, here's the deal. It's crazy boring. It lasts forever. You're going to wish you were dead. <laughs> do you want to borrow my yoga pants? I'm sorry we didn't get the, the video thing, but it was Ron Swanson talking to somebody. His boss was making him go to a meditation class with him. And it's true. It's true. It's true. You have a lot of stuff. And you love the things you own. But it's true about meditation. It feels like it lasts forever. It's crazy boring and you wish you were dead. Why am I talking about this? All right. When you meditate, you may have this as your expectation. See how beautiful she is? That's how I meditate. Full makeup. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, it's great. It's always that great. But if that is your expectation, eh, you're in for a blow. But sometimes your mind just does this. So this is what your mind might be doing for meditation, but that's okay. Don't give up. 
You drive a habit through willpower until it becomes a routine. Do it for 30 days. Just know that anytime you start anything new, it, the first three days are the hardest. So having a morning ritual. Those motivational speakers now say the secret of success is the morning routine. Robin Sharma calls it the 5 a.m. club. Others call it the morning miracle. Rising early is the way to get more done while the rest of the world is sleeping. You use this time to feed your mind and nourish your heart. So how do you do it? You don't have to believe in meditation for it to work. You just have to take the time to do it. But how do you stay motivated for a regular practice? You make it meaningful. I think you know this already. How do school cafeterias get kids to eat their broccoli? They put cheese on it. Yeah, good. Okay, I love audience response. How do, how do they get kids to drink their milk? Chocolate. They put chocolate. So all you have to do for your morning practice is put cheese and chocolate all over it. Okay? No Brussels sprouts. And you might be looking forward to it. Remember, this is your time to be an adventurer and explorer of your mind. There are other things you can do. Look, motivation, motivating pictures. Ah. Bing, bing, bing. Um, yeah, I, I pull things off of Facebook. So some of these pictures may motivate you to start your meditation. Uh, no. No, no, no. That's, that one's going to make you want to go back to bed. But you want to sit comfortably, focus on your breathing, and start with small intervals. You also, uh, great quotations. This is a quot quotation from Dor Dorothy Kilgallen. It's the last thing I read before I, I close my eyes. The world is grand, awfully big, and astonishingly beautiful. Frequently thrilling. Now, did you feel a little shaft of light go into your head when you heard that quote? You know, a little bit of, ah, oh, okay, I need that. I start with the same place, same time. I try to, try to keep a routine. I make the area I meditate in an inviting environment. For instance, since I grew up Catholic, I like a couple of candles. That's meaningful to me. Uh, and meaningful is what this practice is about. It's about me. I guess you think it's about you, but it's about me. <laughs> Sometimes I review this list to remind myself why I meditate. I just wrote this one morning. I do it to be friends with my mind, know myself, start my day, be inspired, refuel, have control, say so about how my head goes, be still, be still, <laughs> rest my mind, undo my view and see reality, which is freedom, be love, and to stop. Visualizations are also very good. Before I meditate, I imagine myself that I'm filled with light and that the universe pours light and what? Pours light and love into me and I offer it back. Not like that. Yeah, like that. He's full of light and he has nice abs. Okay. So with a morning practice, we find that our minds can be true. The inherent qualities of the mind are clarity, strength, and stability. Other morning practices besides the meditation may include having a gratitude list to cultivate appreciation for all the beauty in your life, journaling to unlock your creativity and come to understand yourself on a deeper level, affirmations where you, you tell yourself that this is your time and you choose to awaken to your most extraordinary self. A practice that I like to do in the mornings, I have a small globe of the earth. I also have a jar of rice and lentils, corn. I've even mixed some little bits of jewelry in there. I hold the globe in my hand, and then with my other hand, I pour the jar's ingredients over the earth over and over again. And I'm imagining, I put a towel over my lap so it doesn't go flying around the study. I'm repeatedly imagining that I'm filling the earth up with love, resources. I especially pour it on areas that I've read about in the news where terrible things are happening going for those soccer kids in Thailand, and I'm pouring it over and over again. And I'll usually say this, may all beings everywhere with whom we are inseparably interconnected be awakened, healed, fulfilled, and free. May there be peace in this world and throughout all possible universes. 
May there be an end to war, poverty, injustice, and oppression. And may we all together complete the spiritual journey. So why didn't I show you a cool picture of that practice? Because I wanted you to visualize it. Did you? Oh, okay, good. I meditate to create myself every day. I use my morning practice to become an authentic carrier of love. It's where I fuel myself to face the day. I know we live in a harsh world, and lately it just seems like it's getting harsher. So this is my sacred time where I create the me that I want. With this time, I see my mind as an ally, and I allow myself to be in awe of this life that I've been given. So one more little meditation. Okay, meditation masters say there are many forms of meditation. But the highest is called effortless meditation, where you just rest in the natural state of your mind. If you can relax in the natural state, you'll be in touch with your own heart, your original and innocent heart. So this meditation, let's try that again. We'll breathe in. You don't have to do the 448 thing. Okay, when you're ready, close your eyes, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Now just let go of anything that is stuck inside you. Place one hand on your heart and another hand on your belly. Notice how comforting that feels. See how your breath calms you. It lets yesterday go. You are here for yourself. As you release yesterday, allow your full attention to come to this day, this hour, this time. Now let your heart open and make room for all the good of the universe to come in. And when you are ready, open your eyes. Thanks again for meditating with me.